Hey guys, welcome to Ryan Cook Carves. So this week I am going to show you how to do a quick version of an eye. There is so many different eyes that you can do. This is kind of a human form, but it's mixed with an ape. This is obviously a big foot. So I thought to myself, this is a good one for humans. So if you're doing spirit faces or if you're doing, uh, you know, I don't know. There, this is a simple version of a very, not complicated, but so many different techniques. Every carver's got their own style. Every carver has theirs. This will be my quick version on how to do a human eye mixed with a, you know, a, a bit of an ape. So right away, I look to balance these out. I will use a Dremel 4300 with this attachment. I don't always use this attachment. I normally do it with a uh, free, uh, just with the Dremel itself, but I like this thing. This has a lot of power and it actually lasts a lot. Um, it, it's a lot better than like your Fordhams. I find the Fordham is too slow. So what I'm gonna do right off the hop is I'm gonna push up here and I started doing that and then I thought to myself, you know what, this is a great opportunity to do a good eye video. So I'm gonna push up here, I'm gonna push down here and then I'm gonna find my two center points because if you look at an eye, our heads are one, two, three, four, five, the ears. So we can divide it into five. If you look up uh, how to draw heads and how to uh, divide them up, that is one way to divide up a head. I always do that. The ape is a little bit different. This is a much more pronounced brow, uh, shorter punched in nose. And I think with Harry and the Hendersons, they actually kind of wanted to create a tighter eye socket. So it's a little bit off, but I'm gonna carve the eyes exactly the same as it would be. I use the saber tooth green flame bit that goes for Dremel. Here right below is the picture and the exact number. So you guys can uh, look it up. Um, uh, Sawvalley.com is going to have an online store soon. I'm gonna be working with mostly Canadian. Uh, if you wanna go to American, go to Bob King's. He's got everything there. Or you can just go to sabertooth.com. But if you wanna support me and support Canada, uh, I will be selling a bunch of bits and burrs and all kinds of stuff shortly on an online store that I'm working on right now. Thanks to my good friend, Caitlin Davidson at uh, her amazing website link right here. Let's get to it. Uh, I'll start with this, then I'll work into the uh, cone flame bit for the finish. Won't take long. I like to get a circle. I like to get my where my tear duct is, tear duct is, and then the other parts. And then once I have those kind of shaped, I'll shape it into a circle. And then I'll show you guys the next part. So I really work the circles around the eyes and pushing in on the pupils and the side of the eyes, because at that point you can push a little deeper because it kind of creates a shadow also. And as soon as I've finished that, now I switch to the 125 high speed comb that Dremel sells right here. They work fantastic. It burns and carves at the exact same time. I find that that really punches out lines. Now when I'm doing these, I like to do the top of the eye socket first and then the bottom, as you can see. Once I get that sorted out, I'm going to take my Dremel and I'm going to shape it and round it and kind of just get all the fluff and puff away. Then I like to run a line from the side of the eye, as you can see right here. I just drag the tip all the way across and then I quickly go to the other side where I maintain the exact same kind of pattern because what you're trying to do is make them balance. You want to create two balanced eyes because when people look at them, they will see if they're off. So moving along, I'm using my Dremel 4300 and I've done the outline. This Bigfoot has big uh, eyelids. I think that's what they're called. So. I left those long. I just kind of graze that across and, and just don't go too deep. You're using this as a uh, kind of a guide, you know? And, and what I'm gonna do now 
is it looks odd, but now I know that this is where this is, this is where that is, and now I can recess it in. You guys have to remember that the eyeball is a circle, right? And I'll put a picture of an eye right here. So only like a small fraction of it is actually being shown. So when you're carving it, you're just carving the outer edge of what goes on to be a full circle back there. And that's something you really should factor in. This is just for human form. And my style is way different than like Chris's or Simon O'Rourke who does it like with a half shell. There's so many variations that you could do with this. This is just for me, a quick one that I do with my spirit faces, like all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna do some spirit face videos soon, but right now it's really busy. So I just have to do commission work and try to find videos that I can um, make while I'm doing them. But I thought this was a great opportunity, you know? You can apply them to owls. I've done them with owls. If you wanna give an owl like a human form eye or a bear, I used to do my bears like that. I'll show you one here. And, and, and it's still very effective. It's just not what they actually look like. So for myself, I'm really going into like more of a realistic kind of look a lot of the times. And you know, I over detail things, but that's my style. So whatever you guys find is going to be your style. So just find what works and do it. Hopefully this is going to help you. Let's get at it. I'll show you how we get keep, keep her going. So I just like to scrunch this away. So I'll take this and start working. Well, I sure did make up a word, scrunch. Okay, <laughs> moving on. So if you look at how I'm kind of trying to dig out the eyes, but not really go too deep, I'm just kind of scraping away the layers of wood until it looks flush. And if you can do that without digging too deeply and just using the tip and the, um, the cone of the burr, you can really find an effective way to dig that away. And that works for almost every single eye that I know of. So now I've got that. You can kind of see how it's come and it's looking pretty good. It's quite balanced. It's a little bit off here, but that's okay. I'll get it. It's just harder when you're trying to dig in on one side. Every side is going to be different. Now you want to kind of go, okay, what's the direction this guy's looking? Is he looking straight? Is he looking up? Is he looking down? That's all going to factor where your pupil is. If you're doing a half shell up, if you're doing a half shell down, it's, it's all about what your idea is. If he's looking to the left, that means you're gonna have it pulling over here and then over here. So you have to figure out what's gonna work for you. And for me, I'm doing simple. He's looking forward. I'm gonna do a half shell under and then under here. And then I'm gonna do a very small little pupil here. I just go like this. Hey, so I'm sorry. I couldn't get a good shot of it because literally I'm carving this by myself. But what I do is I do a small circle and then another half circle. And you can see it right there if you look at that eye to the left. That's exactly what I do. I leave a small pupil. I just try to make sure they're directly centered. So they look the same direction. No matter what direction they're looking, they're balanced. So there's a couple more things I could talk about. I'm going to definitely dive more into carving eyes when I start doing lessons. That's coming up in the fall. I've got a lesson plan coming up. So if you guys are interested in taking carving lessons, it's going to be all virtual. It could be anywhere in the world. It's going to be a uh, Skype class once a, once every uh, once a week. We're going to have a project. Everybody's going to carve. Then we're going to talk about them all together and work as a team to kind of create and uh, come up with a cool thing. I, I, I've done this style with my old teacher, but this is kind of how I'm going to end this video. It's very effective. You'll see it as it sands out. He's popping. You got to watch out because when you're doing eyes, it's how you hold this. Be careful. You don't want to get atrophoria with one eye looking at you and one eye looking for you. You know what I mean? And that's very easy and happens a lot if you're not very consistent and doing it at the same time. So I hope this video has helped. My name is Ryan Cook. And as you're watching this right now, 
you're seeing that I've burned it, sanded it, added in some wrinkles in the eyes, and uh, now we're back. So I'm Ryan Cook. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you like the, what I'm doing, give it a subscribe. Everything helps me. I'm really excited when I get them. And uh, yeah, the online store is coming up soon. We're gonna be doing a bunch of things. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers, carve safe, be safe, and be kind to people.